So I wanted to welcome everybody. I want to let you know that at WCU here, WCU Global Campus, we really value our veterans and military service members and all the families. And we want to thank you for your service. And uh, thank you for being here too. And we're glad that you're interested and that we want to give you uh, some good information that could help you make decisions and uh, learn a little bit more about us, what we do, um, benefits and credits and all the different things. So um, thanks for taking the time to join us. So I just wanted to welcome everybody. And then uh, we'll go ahead and get into the slideshow here. All right. So some things we'll be talking about. Um, we're gonna start with introductions. So uh, I'm gonna let you guys introduce yourselves in the chat box, and then we, me and uh, Matt and Emily, will introduce ourselves and tell you a little bit about a little, little bit about us and uh, what our expertise is. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about WC Global Campus, who we are, what we do. Um, our, a little bit of our relationship to veterans and military. Um, then I'll, I'll kind of go into talking about uh, transferring military credits, how if you, you know, are a veteran or active duty service member, your training you can use to, to make you, uh, you know, get through your degree faster. So we'll talk a little bit about that and how we do that here at WSU. Um, then we'll talk about the educational benefits that you may or may not have heard of, the different things that you can do as a uh, veteran, um, reservist, uh, active duty or family member, we'll talk about all those and just kind of do a little bit of an overview. If you have questions, I'll have some resources at the end to get a little deeper into that if some things pop up or, or you can ask me. Um, and if I don't have an answer, then I'll, you know, try my best to find it. So and then um, I'll give it over to Emily and she'll go over some of the admission stuff, you know, our admissions counselor and kind of how you get started, uh, what you'll need to do. Um, and then she'll talk a little bit about the degree programs. She'll be able to talk mo mostly uh, more about the undergrad ones, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about the uh, graduate programs too, and um, we can answer any questions about that later if, if we don't have them now. And then I'll hand over to Matt, who's, um, he's, his uh, area of expertise is the, uh, the business graduate programs, so those are really popular here, especially with veterans, so um, he can speak to that and give you some more information. And I'll have some tools and resources, and then we'll open up for questions. Um, so for me, uh, my name is Jeff Willison. Uh, right now I'm the uh, senior writer for Global Campus. I can do communications and public relations and stuff, but the reason I'm doing this webinar is I got my degree while I was, um, my master's degree in strategic communication here at WC Global Campus while I was active duty in the Navy. Um, so I have experience with that and I, I used my uh, GI Bill and my tuition assistance while I did that, and I was I spent almost no money uh, getting my master's degree. So I was really grateful for knowing how to use those benefits, and I had a really good experience here. And uh, all the, the I had some great teachers, I had some great classmates, and I really learned a lot, which actually helped to get me where I am now. So that's how I um, <clears throat> it was a good stepping stone to get me here. So right currently now, I'm, I'm a Navy veteran, also I'm a reservist right now, so um, I go and do my two weeks a month or two weeks a year, begin the month. Um, so I could speak to that a little bit too, you know, and I understand that, um, that kind of lifestyle if we have any of those. Um, yeah, and right now I'm a current uh, staff member. So I'll go ahead and uh, switch it over to Emily and she can introduce herself. Hey everyone, my name is Emily Chandler and I am an admissions counselor with the Global Campus. I've been here for gosh almost over five years now and in terms of kind of what I do at uh, Global is I work with undergraduate students and really help you get started with the process of uh, beginning school. So anything from uh, what is the global campus, how does it work, what do I want to study, to getting you to get those final transcripts in and get you started to finishing your degree. So that's really what I do here. All right, welcome everybody. Glad you could join us this evening. It's great to have you with us. Um, so I'm a Washington State graduate back in the olden times, 1990 something, a long time ago. Uh, much older than the rest of you, but um, so I spent the the next 22 years in the United States Air Force. I'm a Air Force veteran. I'm a C-130 guy by trade. And um, I had the great uh, fortune and opportunity to come back here to my alma mater and uh, help the school and help veterans um, primarily in the Carson College of Business. So I work with uh, mostly with MBA and EMBA students who are coming back and getting their business degrees. Um, and I work closely with our Washington State Veterans Affairs office as well, trying to promote 
positive programs for our students throughout our campuses, both online and, and our resident campus as well. So that's kind of me, that's kind of what I do. So if you have any questions about that, or just college in general, um, please feel free to reach out tonight or even after the case, shoot me an email. I'm happy to put you in touch with folks that might be able to help you. Thanks. All right, so I'll start with what is WSU Global Campus and kind of who we are. Um, WSU, you probably have uh, seen us around, you know, we're really popular <laughs> with our uh, sports teams and everything, and we're, uh, especially in the Northwest, very, um, very famous, and everyone knows us, our logo and everything. But we've been here since uh, 1890. Uh, we have six campuses all across Washington State, over in Vancouver and Everett and uh, Tri Cities, Spokane, and then uh, also um, you know we have here Global Campus, so we're our own campus. Um, then uh, let's see, so Global Campus started out in 1992. I think it started out with um, correspondence, so doing stuff by mail, and then as the internet came along, we we started coming together and being able to put stuff all across the world. So there are coops. Um, when I was going to Global Campus, there's people over in the Middle East and and uh, Europe and all across the world that we were talking to. So um, we're all of our programs are all online. So everything you don't have to do anything here or at any of the campuses. You can do it all online. And but we the, all the degrees are the same as anything else you would learn at earn at WSU. So. The same same degree as Matt got and, and uh, everything. It's got the same prestige and everything. It's not an online degree. It's a WSU degree, and you can earn that online. So um, one thing that's a little bit different for us, you know, we have a different demographic because um, our campus isn't is virtual and not in one place. So um, in the other campuses, pe people are a lot younger. You know, you have a lot of people coming out of high school going to college, and in our campus, there are a lot of people who are older who've already started their careers, have families. Um, our average age is 31, and we actually have a lot more military people percentage-wise than our other campuses. So, um, at for example, at Pullman here, they have about 1%, which you know matches up with the general population of uh, military-affiliated people. There's about 1% in the, the country who are were in the military, um, but here we have eight, eight, about 8%, eight and that also, there might be a little bit more, too, because we're still working on kind of figuring out who all is military-affiliated in our, <laughs> in our uh, um, because there are some people who are family members who we might not uh, know of yet. So we're, we're working on trying to, to get even more of that and, and understand who all is uh, military affiliated and global campus. But yeah, we definitely, because of that, um, we want to be able to get out there and uh, um, give special attention to our military and veterans and make sure that they're using all their benefits and their credits and everything. See, so um, here's some some more about us, like what you can get out of uh, specifically WSU Global Campus. Um, we we definitely uh, have a, some prestige, you know, as you can see there. But we've uh, US News and World Report has ranked us uh, for bachelor's degrees, veterans, um, and uh, some benefits of doing an online degree is you can do, like I said, 100% WSU, but it's online and you can do it whenever you want, wherever you want, and you know, all across the world. Um, but while you're doing that, we actually have a lot of community stuff you can do too. There's opportunities to do government. If you want to do student government, we have a lot of online students all across Washington and the world who are involved with that. Um, you can also do like these webinars. Um, if you want to do other things that you have interests in, Global Connections, you can do that. Um, so we try to make it kind of an online campus experience where it's, if you want to get involved, you can get more involved and kind of be more, uh, um, like a normal campus experience. All right. Um, we also we have the academic advisors and we have career counseling. That's another community thing that will kind of help you move forward in your degree in your career. And then after, once you do graduate, we have a really powerful alumni network, the lots of coups all around the world that can um, help you with your career and help you know uh, connect you and networking and all that kind of stuff. So those are some good things about us. All right, so uh, moving on to some of the military stuff. Um, if you were in the military, I know we have some family members, um, but I see that we have some, uh, some. oh yeah, there we go, we got uh, reservists. Oh, we got, um, what was active duty? Nine years, that's me too. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, um, for 
um, those who are in the military, um, transferring military credits that can really help move along your experience or you know, getting, getting your degree faster. Um, I use this a lot to get my bachelor's degree. I did it while I was active duty. Um, not at WSU, I did it at another school. I did my master's here. But when I did that, it really helped me move along. I was used all, able to use a lot of my credits that I got from my, my um, technical training and my basic training went into my degree and I was able to get a lot faster because of that. So I'll go into that a little bit. Um, most people, I see some Navy in there. I, I haven't seen any, oh, we've got Air Force. Um, so for all the branches except Air Force, um, you can use the Joint Service Transcript or JST. And you've probably heard of this. Um, it takes all your training um, and you can, it, it puts into a transcript and which you can use to uh, move your degree along. So, you know, you can save your benefits for something else. You can, um, um, get, it gets you closer to graduation um, for, and I'll go ahead and, and that's what probably most of the, you know, most of the branches have that. For Air Force, they have the uh, Air University. So that's what the Air Force has. Um, so you can also use that. I have a little less experience with that. I use my uh, JST. But um, same thing, you know, you can do up to the 30 credits. Um, so that will help move it along if it, you know, and you can apply that. So once you do start going through the admissions process, you can put in your transcripts. And um, there's a little more about uh, if you want to go to this website, transfercredit.wc.edu, you get a little more information about that. Um, that's the, the uh, um, transfer clearinghouse, I think. Um, so that will give you a little bit more information about transferring those. But that really help, can help move along and, and get you going, um, get them quicker. Um, so we'll go into the benefits a little bit. So um, as you, you know, move along through your degree, it's going to definitely help you if you can pay for it and not have to do out of pocket. Um, as I said before, I wasn't, I think I've only spent, I spent a few hundred on things like books. And I think um, one year I did run out of TA, which we'll talk about. So I'd had to pay a little bit out of pocket. Uh, but I, I got all the way through my master's degree and almost didn't have to pay for anything. So that really helps. Don't have to worry about loans, all that stuff. So um, I'll try to, to go over um, the benefits for all the different categories here. So um, as for military affiliated, there's four general categories. You have active duty people who are active duty right now. Um, you have people who are <coughs> reserve or national guard veterans, and then uh, dependents or, you know, uh, spouses, uh, kids, um, things like that. So there's going to be different um, benefits that people can take advantage of if you're in any of those categories. So I'll go over those real quick. Um, for active duty, a big one is tuition assistance. So um, it's okay. <laughs> uh, that, this, uh, it covers <clears throat> 250 for semester credits and then it has a limit per fiscal year there. Um, so 18 credits. So it definitely won't cover everything, but that will help. You know, and um, this is what I used when I was doing my bachelor's degree. I also used it when I did my master's, um, but I did what I talked about down here is uh, the GI Bill. I used the, the TA top up, so I used both. When I started doing my master's degree, it's a little more costs for credit to do a, a graduate program. So if you're doing that, it helps to have that. Uh, you can use your GI Bill and then top up at the same time. Some things with top up, there's some requirements. Um, I believe uh, you have to, let's see, I think all of them, all the branches do that for active duty people. Um, it's kind of a voluntary thing. It's not something that, uh, you know, so I, and I believe you have to get it approved through your, through your command. Um, they might have different requirements. Um, you have to be able to have enough time and service to complete your courses. So if you're going to be getting out soon, they won't, won't let you um, do it past that time. Um, and I believe you have to do a uh, degree plan so that they'll want to know what degree you're going for and they'll, you know, they'll follow, make sure you're following that degree plan. Um, so you can't use that for anything other than a degree. You know, you can't use it for the non-degree options, which we'll talk about later. Um, yeah. And then the GI Bill, there are two, you know, there's the Montgomery um, and the post 9-11. Uh, the the post 9-11 is what a lot more people are using now. Um, I had both and I actually used the Montgomery a little bit for my, my TA top up um, visit. I was told uh, about the people who helped me out that it kind of gave me a little bit more bang for my buck <laughs> as far as that. Uh, but um, if you do have a Montgomery, if you switch the post 9-11, you can't go back. 
So you have to, I, I used my Montgomery for a little while and then I uh, actually ended up transferring, which we'll talk about, I transferred the rest to my wife. So, um, but uh, yeah, so the, those, those two choices, the post 9-11 is the one that has the uh, allowances. So you can get housing allowance with that and you can get the books. Um, so we'll talk about that a little more when we get to veterans. Um, yeah, the TA top up is using both. There's also the vocational rehabilitation and, and employment. <clears throat> that's the uh, that's another uh, for active duty and veterans can take advantage of that. That's a VA program, and that can have uh, education and career counseling. So that's why I put that on there. Um, you can get onto that on the VA um, if you're interested in doing that. That's kind of a program for veterans to try to help get them acclimated to civilian life, like that kind of thing. But active duty can do it. And uh, that will help you kind of get an idea of what degree you want to get and then uh, career counseling, that kind of thing. But that's another option that's available to you um, through the VA. So for reserves, um, it's a little, you have the Montgomery GI Bill selected reserve. So um, I know a little less about that. Um, I have some information here though, if people do have questions. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we can talk about that more. I have some information on that, but I know that's a little different than the, uh, you know, they don't have the post 9-11 with the allowances and stuff. It's more like the Montgomery GI Bill, the, the older version. So the uh, reservists can do that. There's also the Reserve Educational Assistance Program, but that is discontinued, discontinued for most people. I think there are some people who are still eligible, but most people, um, uh, aren't now and then even the people who are I think it goes completely away in November this year So um, if you are eligible or you think you might be you're in your reservist um, Well, you know, you, we can look into that and see if you you would be able to use that But for most people probably not I think it's kind of an older thing that they're phasing out So for most reservists um, if, if that's all you've ever been is a reservist, uh, you know, you don't have your active duty stuff um, the uh, Montgomery GI yeah, Bill for a reservist would be what you would be looking into and, and using for yours. Let's see. So for veterans, uh, we talked about the Montgomery GI Bill. This is like kind of the Vietnam era um, GI Bill that's been around for a long time where they, you know, you, it doesn't have any uh, allowances attached to it. It's kind of just to pay the tuition. Um, like I said, for I actually used this, I was told that using it, I think it paid by, um, Credits versus time or so I forget how but there's a certain way that when you use it with with a TA top-up You can get a little bit more out of it um, Where the post 9 live in uh, if you're um, using TA um, It's doesn't go as far, but uh, you know when you're a veteran you don't have to worry about that So but I think most people are probably if they they can do the post 9 11 They'll do that because like you can get allowances out of it. You can get a housing allowance like your your uh, basic um, allowance for housing BH that you get when you're on active duty, it's based on where you're located. So, you know, it'll be uh, um, more or less depending on where you are in the country. And you can find out on the uh, um, DOD website, I believe, or where, how much that would be. Um, it also depends on uh, whether or not you're full-time. So if you're not full-time, you won't get the full housing allowance. And um, the uh, office here, the veterans office here can help you kind of calculate what that will be. Um, and I believe there's a book allowance too. I'm not quite sure how much it is, but you can get a little bit of help with books, which can be expensive. Um, and then the, I talked about the uh, employment uh, and career counseling that we uh, talked about before. That's also available to veterans from the VA. So it can kind of help you figure out um, a little bit about how you want to use your degree for your career, things like that, help you plan ahead. Um, for dependents, um, you can use GI Bill if it's transferred. I actually, I did this personally. I transferred it to my wife. Um, I was able to do that when I went, became a reservist. Um, usually they let you do this as an incentive for re-enlisting. Um, yeah, so for dependents. Um, so um, military and veterans that could potentially transfer their, uh, their GI Bill, usually it's used as an, as an incentive. For, so for me, they told me I had to re-enlist or enlist in the reserves for I think of six years I had to do, and then they let me do it. Um, but if you do that, you'll transfer whatever you didn't use to your spouse. And then so dependents, you can use it just like a service member would. Um, so for example, my wife can could come here and she could use it um, and potentially get the BAH, get, get everything um, out of it just like a service member would. Um, if they could also transfer the Montgomery GI Bill, probably be a little less, I mean, if that's all they have. Um, they could probably do that, but if they have the option to do the post 9-11, probably would be uh, better to use that. 
Um, and there's also a few different uh, programs just for survive or, uh, survivors and dependents. So that's for like gold star families and things like that um, to help them. Um, we, you know, we give some uh, special reverence for people like that. So um, there's a lot of uh, different ways. Uh, I have the uh, on military one source. There's a lot of information about that. There's a lot of scholarships uh, for spouses and for dependents. And uh, if you go to that page right there um, that I have, and I'll, I'll think I saw at the end as well, um, you can get a lot more. There's a, <clears throat> for specific, there's a, I know there's, here's a, there's a grant for Coast Guard, Marine Corps. Um, so there might be some uh, scholarships and things that, that, are, that will really help you out. Um, there's a lot on here. So um, if you go to that uh, right there, that might help. Uh, spouses a lot. I remember when I was active duty, my wife ended up using for um, a degree she was going for. Um, she got her bachelor's and she was able to use some uh, some scholarships and things that helped her out. Um, so yeah, that, that'd be either if you're a spouse or dependent of a veteran or active duty or, or you're a reservist. So just go take a look at those if you're in that category and see if there's anything that might apply to you that might really help you out. All right, so uh, that's the kind of an overview of the uh, the credits and the uh, um, some of the benefits there that we could help you out. A lot of that stuff did help me out, and I want you know wanted to be able to pass that information on to people and let them know that they can do it too, you know. And uh, um, here's a little more information from Emily to if you you know are interested in getting started, here's here's how you do it. All righty, thank you. So for the application process, I know when you're first thinking about either going back to school or starting your degree, it can feel a little overwhelming uh, because it can seem like there are a lot of steps and where do you even begin? And uh, that's why I am an admissions counselor. I'm here to help you through that process of starting. So um, I've broken it down here. We have three main steps to get started at WSU. So if you're, you, after this webinar, get excited and want to get started, these are the first three steps um, to begin with. So the first step is to kind of decide how you're going to fund your education. So as we just talked about, we talked a lot about benefits. Um, so if you're planning to use benefits, you want to get start getting that squared away. And if you are planning to apply for federal financial aid through the FAFSA, then you would also want to fill that form out. So the FAFSA is for need-based financial aid. It's based on your, on your taxes. So if you are planning to use that instead of benefits or in addition to benefits, you would want to get that filled out. So um, for the for financial aid, um, for the FAFSA, you want to fill it out essentially as soon as possible. If you're thinking about um, starting at all in uh, 2020 for the 2019 to 2020 academic year, so that would be for our spring semester that starts in January or our summer semester that um, has varying start dates but essentially begins in May, then you'll want to fill out the FAFSA as soon as possible. If you're thinking about starting in fall of 2020, you can begin to fill out the FAFSA um, as soon as October of this year. So highly recommend filling that out. Then the next uh, form of funding we have is scholarships. And there's um, quite a few different opportunities for that. And we do have a scholarship website that, that details all of them there. And I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have about that. And then the next step is really to apply for admission. Now, the nice thing about applying for admission is that it gets you this online student center where you can track all of your components at once. You can track your financial aid. You can track your application status. So that way, if you're not sure where you're at in the process, you can always take a look at your student center and you gain um, that access by uh, applying. So you, you will be able to begin applying for admission for our, um, all of our 2020 terms um, starting around the 15th of this month. So you'll be able to submit your application for that. And then the third step is to request your official transcripts from every college that you've attended. Now, if you have over one year of transferable college work, you're only going to need to submit your official transcripts from each college that you've attended. 
However, if you have less than one year of transfer work or you're not quite sure, please feel free to contact me. There's just some additional documentation you would need to submit, such as your high school transcript, and that's a really good conversation for us to have so you know exactly what you need to submit. And I did chat a bit about what my role um, as an admissions counselor is, but essentially I'm your person. So if you have any questions along the way, you're not sure where you are, you're not sure who to reach out to, I'm the go-to person. So you can always send me an email, you can uh, give me a call, and I'm happy to, to help you and get you connected to the correct resource. So um, that's answering questions along the way. I'm here to help you find the right fit for your degree program, which we're gonna talk about those degree programs next. And um, I can also connect you to different resources. So here are the current undergraduate degrees that we offer online. So these are the bachelor programs that we have. And as you can see, we have, we have a number of them and we are continuing to add handfuls of programs here and there. So the, the main categories of um, programs we offer, so as you can see, we have a number of business options there, including accounting, management, management information systems, marketing, and we also offer a hospitality business management program. Now, all of the um, majors within the College of Business, which those programs fall under, they have a special set of requirements to them that we call business certification requirements. It's just our fancy way of, of saying prerequisites for the major. And if you're interested in pursuing um, anything within business administration, um, I do recommend contacting me, um, especially if you have some college work or you're thinking about taking additional college work before transferring, just to make sure we're setting you up for success there. Now, in terms of our other programs, um, we have a number under the kind of social sciences or humanities umbrella there. So um, some of those programs would be um, anthropology, um, criminal justice, those types of programs, psychology, political science. And um, th so that's another category that we have. And then we also have some other categories such as um, data analytics and that is definitely a more specialized degree. So if you're interested in, in that program, that's another one I'd encourage you to uh, reach out to me on. All right, I'm ready for the next slide. And in addition to undergraduate degrees, we do offer some graduate options. So if you wanted to, to continue on with your education, um, you could certainly pursue a graduate degree. Now, this is a little out of my realm of expertise. I'm the undergraduate admissions counselor. But the thing with the graduate programs is that it's really important to connect directly with the program that you're interested in. Each program has its own set of requirements, so it is important to um, it is important to make sure that you're connecting directly with that program to ensure you're meeting the prerequisites that you understand how the program works. So, if you're interested in any of the graduate programs, and Matt is actually going to come on to talk about our um, MBA programs. Um, so he would be a, a great point of contact for those, but if you're interested in any of the others that are listed here, please let us know and we can get you connected directly with the program contact. Um, now I noticed we had a question here. Um, so Nia asked, Emily, I'm, cur I'm currently a student at Tri-Cities and I was wondering if I have to get transcripts and apply for admission. Would I officially be a student at Global instead? So Nia, if you're interested in switching to the Global campus and you're currently, oh, and this is a private, I saw that she just sent this to me, <laughs> sorry about that. But this is a good question though, because if you are currently at another campus and you're looking to um, switch over to global is just a simple form. So you just fill out the change of campus form and that gets you switched over to global. You just want to make sure that we do offer the program that you are currently pursuing and you just fill out the change of campus form. And Nia, I'll be sure to grab your email address and we can uh, send you a link directly to that form and you would switch over to global so you would be a global student instead of a Tri-Cities student. Sorry if I, you didn't want me to say that one <laughs> out loud, but I think it was a, a good question for everybody. All right, switch it over to Matt here. All right, cool, my turn, right? Um, so I did notice, I was gonna add one thing uh, that uh, Nia had, had asked and it was about um, credits having to take an online or one class in person versus online. So. 
I'm not sure. I know Emily probably can answer what your uh, course load can consist of when it comes to online versus in person. But um, Jana Kay is, is a good contact down in Tri Cities if you have a question about how that works down there at your campus. So she's a good resource. Uh, for me, um, like I said, my world is the online MBA, so I deal primarily with uh, folks who are getting their graduate degree, although I do get a lot of questions from time to time about undergraduate degree and benefits and things like that. So happy to answer those questions. Uh, my role here as the Military and Veteran Affairs Manager is actually not dealing too much with benefits. What I, what I do really is programmatic. So for our folks who are at the graduate level, they're really looking to kind of um, add some fuel to the fire of their career. And so what we do is we build programs, networking programs, career coaching, um, some resume building, things like that to really enhance their experience. So that's largely what I do for those students. And also a lot of um, providing them with resources. If you didn't know, there's tons of resources out there for you as military affiliated, I'll call it. So whether you're a veteran, active duty, spouse, uh, dependent, there's a lot of resources out there to make sure you're successful. So. Um, be sure to, um, and I'm going to actually I'll type a message here real quick for one of, one of the premier ones, which is called Service to School. You can Google Service to School Veterans, and I'll put the website up there. But it's a great one. Their sole mission in life is to make sure you have the resources you need as a veteran uh, to get into the school you want to get into and to make sure you utilize your benefits. So that's a great resource out there. Um, our MBA program is, is, is well ranked, uh, not just in the veteran space, but uh, across the country, community. We're really one of the only uh, online, fully 100% online schools that does a, a quality AACSB accredited degree. So maybe not today, uh, but if in the future that's something you can see yourself doing, then please reach out to us and we can provide you some information. Uh, and again, I'm happy to uh, be a resource for you. So there's not too many people named Beer that work for Washington State. So if you want to find me, you probably can. Um, so shoot me a note. And, uh, and again, glad to be here. Glad to be a resource for you all. And I'll have our, all of our email addresses, I'll have at the end of the, the slide, so if okay. you guys want to get up with me or Matt or Emily. Um, well, I was, I was, hey, uh, was going to add one thing, Jeff. Somebody had, had asked a question about, um, about benefits for, you know, if you're 100% or not 100%. So yeah. I typed a message, I think you probably all saw that on there, but essentially if you're over 50% time, if you're over half-time student, you will get a, a BAH benefit. And for online students, if you're 100% online, you're going to get 50% of the national average. And I think right now it's around 820 some dollars, maybe a little bit more than that now. It might have gone up a little bit. Um, so you will get that amount of money. And then for your, for your books, it's about $47 per credit hour. So a lot of that's variable. It's going to be individually dependent, right? So whatever your specific situation is. So the team at, at Global Camps is going to make sure you're all registered and ready to go. And then you're going to connect with our, our, our Veterans Affairs office on campus and they're going to walk you step by step through all that money stuff. And, and they'll make sure you have accurate, you know, personalized information for you. So uh, I'll just throw that out there. Yeah, thanks. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I had forgotten that uh, yeah, it was the national average for online students. Well, thanks for putting that out there, Matt. Cool. Um, I'll go ahead and go to the next slide here. Uh, all right. um, do, if you have anything else to say, uh, Emily, about non-degree options. Yeah, so we do have some non-degree options available. Uh, what this means is that these are credit, so these are um, either certificates or just courses that, that you would take, and you still earn credit for these um, courses or certificates that you're earning, but um, what you're not earning a full bachelor's or master's degree is what that means. Um, so with non-degree, um, there's the, the link there so you can see the options available, but someone may use non-degree um, if, you know, if they want to, for instance, pursue a graduate program and they just need that one last prerequisite, right? And they, they didn't get that as part of their, their bachelor's program, so they may decide to just take one class with us and uh, pursue that. So that's just one example of non-degree. And then we also do have some certificate programs. Uh, one of them, for example, is the professional writing certificate. So maybe you have a job and you, you want to kind of um, up your game uh, with where you are, then uh, the professional writing certificate or another one of the certificate programs may be a good option. So it's just another option that we have available to students. Cool. All right. All right.
So yeah, so um, I have a few websites here for some tools and resources, and we went over some of these. Um, we have a uh, specific page on our Global Campus website for veterans. So it has a lot of this information that I've, I put through here about the credits, about uh, so the different benefits, and it will has links that will lead you back to give you more information about those uh, specific rates and things like that. Um, and you can see if you're eligible, um, stuff like that. Um, the, then I also have va.wsu.edu. So this is where the, uh, Matt was talking about the uh, Veterans Affairs people that will walk you through your, your benefits if you're gonna be using those. Um, so that's their website. Um, I'll, I'll also give you their uh, contact information in a minute um, so you can get a hold of them. They'll help you uh, work through there. If you are using benefits like the GI Bill, they'll be the ones who will be signing off your stuff. So you'll definitely be working with them. Um, yeah, and then I have the uh, VA.gov, their, their education benefits. So you can just look at that. Uh, that will walk you through some of the things they, they, they provide. Uh, for active duty, military one source is really good. That has a lot of stuff about education and uh, employment um, to, to help you out with that. That's where they, you can learn more about TA and um, that's a lot of the active duty stuff. And then uh, I had mentioned the transfer stuff. So if you're um, interested in kind of finding out how much your stuff's gonna transfer, that would be a place to start there, the, the transfer clearinghouse. And then I have, um, here's our emails. So if you wanna contact the, any of us, if you have any questions, we'll, if we don't know the answer, uh, we'll direct you to the right place. We can get you connected. I know Matt's got lots of good connections and, and uh, knows what's going on with all the uh, military stuff. So he'll be able to help you out with a lot of that. And if you have any uh, questions for me about what it, you know, what it was like being a, uh, a student um, in active duty or as a, as a reservist, things like that, you can uh, go ahead and ask me. And then Emily's there too to help you out with any of your admission stuff. Um, I have the veterans. Um, this is the WSU veterans. So this is the, um, the online school, um, goes through WSU Pullman's Veterans Affairs Office there. And uh, there's their website and their phone number if you wanna call them and they can talk to you about, about stuff, so. Doesn't look like anybody has any more questions. So thanks everybody for coming uh, or for coming here and, and learning with us and um, just contact us if you have any questions uh, and uh, we'll try to help you out best we can. So again, we appreciate you and thank you for your service and uh, we'll, um, we're here to help, so thanks.